feel the cool breeze. It's such a lovely tease. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Posca Paint Party. Today, we're going to do something super fun. What are we doing, Drew? We're going to draw aliens. Aliens. Yeah, they're so much fun. Okay, and I want to give a special thanks to our good friends at Posca who are making these Posca Paint Parties possible. That's a lot of peas. And they are also allowing us to give away this wonderful box of paint pens to one winner at every paint party. So yeah, and these are seven M's. This is a pack of 15, my signature pen. So somebody will be receiving those at the end of class. Yes. All right. All right. We're ready to go. I'll see ya. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome. I'm Drew Barofi, of course. And um, I just wanted to do something fun and exciting. This is Wednesday. So Wednesday is kind of a fun day. And one of the things that I've done over the years is uh, paint space scenes and uh, with aliens. And I've done this many times when I'm teaching kids, but it's a really fun exercise because you keep adding things into it. And I'd like just to start off by telling you a little story. I, sometimes when I'm teaching kids, they, um, little kids are just go and they're like ready to just attack the painting and get paint on there. But sometimes around 12 years old, they're like, oh, I don't know how to do it. And they, they're not that into it. So I made up this rule is I don't care what you do. I just want you to get rid of all the white. And it was one of the coolest things I ever did because what I found is people started painting and they just started filling it up. And so this one little boy, he painted his whole canvas black. And I'll, he came to me and so said, they, they want to just be done with it, like it's some kind of project. And then he goes, okay, I'm done. And it's all black. And I said, wow, that's a really good job. You got rid of all the white. And he says, yeah. And he goes, I did it. And I said, well, what is that? And he looks at it and he goes, it's space. And I'm like, oh, I love space. I like Star Trek and Star Wars and sci-fi films. I was like, well, you know, when I look at the, the sky at night, I see a bunch of stars. I was like, why don't you go add some stars? And he was like, oh, like he wanted to be done. He goes, okay. And he goes back and he starts adding some stars everywhere. And he brings it back and he goes, I'm done. And he show, shows it to me and he's got stars all over it. I went, oh, those are some really good stars. And then I kind of showed him how to do a, a really cool star. And he did a couple of really cool stars. And then I said, you know, one time when I was a little boy, I saw the space shuttle go up. And it was like going up into space and fire coming out of it. And it was just telling him the story. And then he went, oh, yeah. And I was like, add a spaceship. So then he added a spaceship. And what was interesting, he didn't come back and say he was done. And I started teaching all the other kids. And I turned around about a half hour later and came back to him. And he had this crazy space scene going on with all these aliens and spaceships and planets. And it's just a really good theme to paint. So... That's why I wanted to do this today and, um, and share it with you. All right, so let's get started over here. We shift, shift to this other camera and I have some ideas. There we go. And so these are some funny little aliens and space scenes, what I'm talking about. And you don't have to paint what I paint. What really what I want is you to be free to create. And this is just a great format. Aliens can be short, they can be fat, they can be skinny, they could be tall, they could be big blobs of jelly, they could be anything. But really, this is just an exercise in imagination and creativity. Um, here's another one I did. And then this was one of the aliens that I did a long time ago for Lost. And he was like just so funny looking because he was just like tall and skinny with his big old head. And so I'm going to draw a couple of aliens just to kind of give you an idea. And on a scratch piece of paper, you can do the same of just having this fun creativity of maybe drawing an alien. So I'll leave this one so you can see it in case you want to copy it. And then I always start out with just doing circles. And, you know, so if I was going to draw him, I'd start out with just a circle and maybe little circles for the eyes. And like I said in the last lesson, um, those of you who watched the sunrise lesson, keep this as loose as possible. 
and you know you can have them have a, a big smiling grin so a big smiley face i don't know if you can we can see this or you could have them a frowny face or an angry face or big sharp teeth i could make them nice and fat with like funny looking so just keep in mind you can do it any way you want can you kind of see that but there's really no rules the main thing i want to convey here is keeping this loose. This is just the map. You can add the details with color later, um, but really having fun drawing like aliens in different shapes. I'm going to draw a little darker so you can see this. You know, if you were going to draw like a all like little shapes, like this is his face, and then I would like say his body, maybe spindly legs, maybe big old feet, toes. If you see, everything's almost like little lines and 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 little round shapes. So I don't want you to draw this dark like I am. I'm just doing it for um, so you can see it on the camera. And then what is he doing? Is he holding a, a gun or a, is he holding a, you know, some kind of just tool or something? I wish I had some of the vans that I would I had painted. I did a lot of alien vans, um, camper vans, and they were really cool. So this isn't really like a drawing exercise. It's really just a creative exercise of just having these different ways to draw these guys. Um, you could even draw one that looks like an octopus. Like you could take this guy here and like have octopus arms coming off of them. So you guys get the idea. Just do not hold back. If you have some kind of like funny thing you want to add to him, maybe he has octopus arms for, for legs. Maybe he's, you know, he could be anything. But then the next thing is, is planets, uh, planets and stars and spaceships. So we're going to have a sky. So just planets are real easy. They're just like circles and you could add like a little half moon on it, or you could add little craters on it. You could add rings to it. Things like this stars are just like little things like this, um, land, like it's on a planet. You could have like little spaceships, flying saucers. You could have rockets, all these different things. So I want to keep this in mind as we do our real drawing. So this is the loose one. And I'm going to do something on the canvas. And I think this is time for whatever you're painting on canvas or, or cardboard or, or whatever you're using. This is the time to do this. All right, so I'll leave this here. And let me put this guy out so you can kind of get an idea of that one, what that one looks like. So for me, I'm going to do like a, a planet. So this is the surface of the planet. And then I'm going to do my alien. I'm going to do, I'm going to do an alien running. So imagine if you were in a spaceship and you came up to this tiny little planet and there was this crazy alien running. Can you hold it up to the screen um, a little sure. closer, if that's possible, because you can't really see. There you go. That's better. Thank you. Yeah, and I don't necessarily want you to copy mine. I just kind of want to... Ooh, I might have him surfing. That's what he's going to be doing. But you can see how I'm just doing this like real light look to it. And that's what I want you to do is just have fun drawing this funky little character, however he's going to be. I'm drawing his fingers up here. I don't know if you can see that. And the alien concept of just painting was just supposed to be a funny little, little idea, but they're fun to draw. And what's cool about it is there's no getting it wrong. There's no wrong when you're drawing aliens because that's what's great about like sci-fi films. And how fun must it be to work on one of those sci-fi films because the, 
aliens are all different. And he's going to be like on a little motorized surfboard. Sound effects helps. Everybody kind of see that? He's kind of happening. Now your alien probably doesn't look like mine, but that's okay. I'm going to put something coming off his eyebrows. And he has a tail. <laughs> All right. Another cool thing, sometimes like you see how I have this like planet on this one, he's got like a hole in it. This has got a big worm going in it. So, you know, these ideas of just anything goes is what I want to see. And like I said, this is really an exercise in creativity. I don't care what you do. Just let's get rid of all the white during this project. And it all starts with a cool looking sketch. And a cool sketch doesn't have to be a final sketch. It's just a real loose map. That's what we're going for. So now I'm going to put some planets and stuff in here. I love the planet Saturn. So I like the ones with the rings on it. Something like this. And I'm going to put an eyeball on my planet. Just think if there was a big planet with an eyeball on it. Something like that. I'm going to put a comet going by. And he's going to go in the same direction as the alien. So just think of comets. Weren't really comets. It was aliens surfing in the sky. So I'm going to put a couple of them. Now I'm going to put a couple moons around this guy. There's going to be some stars. And stars are like this. I do a little like a cross with a little circle. And that kind of just signifies a star. All right. And this is the planet below. How's that? So I had no idea what type of alien I was going to draw, just made it up. And that's the way yours should be. It should just be like whatever you come up with. Or you can copy this guy, which is kind of cool. And this is kind of a version of that guy. So for mine doesn't have sharp teeth. All right. So I'm going to start painting my guy. And just like everything else, uh, when I'm doing one of these like little projects, I start with one color combination. You guys have heard me say this over and over and over again. And the lightest color combination is the best one to start off with. So this one is going to have uh, yellow and orange and white, or is going to be my color combination. And that's going to be for the fire coming out of this uh, rocket surfboard and maybe the comments. So, and this is interactive. I do want people to be able to ask questions. And so since I'm starting to paint, this might be a good time to ask questions for anybody who has any, uh, they're stuck on something or just want to show their work or, or anything like that. So we're open for that. As yeah, so if you have a question, you can, there's two different ways you can ask it. You can either write it in the chat and I will ask Drew for you, or if you want to be unmuted and you want to ask him yourself, you can raise your hand. There's a, um, there's a place where you can hit raise your hand and uh, that signifies to bring you on, or or you can just type in the chat you what that you want to ask Drew yourself and you want to be unmuted. And we'd also like to see anything you want to share. So anytime during the next 45 minutes, let us know if you want to share what you're working on and show what you're working on. Yeah, and, and there again, this is really there's what's great about this exercise is that there's no wrong. There's no wrong way to do it. And so it's really fun just to explore it and draw something funny and ridiculous and go all the way to completion, filling this whole canvas or, or whatever you're painting on to completion. And that's what's great about art in general, and especially the Posca pens, is you can sit 
and start and finish a painting in one sitting. And so what I like about this is uh, just coming up with these funny ideas and making them come to life. Uh, you come up with some really great stuff. And if you stick and commit to getting rid of all the white canvas and filling it up, you're pretty much guaranteed to come up with something pretty cool. Okay, so Dan, our good buddy Dan Schoenberg wants to um, be spotlighted. There he is. How you doing? Hey, Dan. Dan? Good, good. I'm doing all right. Um, do you use a certain kind of pencil? that doesn't have so much lead, uh, lead left behind that gets in the uh, paint? I do not. Um, I don't really worry about it. Some people like to use like a, um, a mechanical pencil and it leaves less of a, a lead, but I don't really worry about it so much. Um, I let it kind of blend in with the paint. If it's bothering you, maybe try to maybe use a mechanical pencil, but um, I get yeah, that. I've, been I've been taking your advice as far as not worrying about it and letting it just make it some texture in there. And that's actually worked out good for me. Uh, but then there was a couple instances where I definitely wanted the solid background and I was like having trouble. But yeah, uh, yeah I guess I'll just go with a harder lead, like a mechanical. I, um, you know, when I uh, was a starting artist, I, I remember seeing like fi finished people's like art finished by people in magazines and stuff and I was like gosh my stuff does not look like that and it really bothered me because I thought my stuff wasn't good and then as I got older I got to go to a museum where I saw Rick Griffin's artwork the real uh, originals and I was blown away at how much uh, of the lead pencil was showing through and what was really cool about that was I could see how he did it and in the production of whatever the posters and things that were made later off of these originals, they kind of took that look out. But my point is, is that, you know, being able to see how something is created is kind of cool. So I kind of, even in my like really finished art, I don't mind the lead pencil coming through because it makes it look real versus something you know so much art is created on the computer these days which is fine but it's always really nice when you find out that like oh i can see how this guy did this i can see that he hand painted it and um so that's why i don't mind the lead coming through you can see i'm just picked another color this is uh uh the planet in the background and i'm not really trying that hard i'm just kind of like you know playing with it and this is all we're going to do. We're going to go around. We're going to keep filling all these colors and, you know, just picking like fun stuff to, to mix with it. Totally, almost totally random. I'm going to do the ring and green. I got to make sure I don't cover the pen so you can see. Hopefully everybody, we're getting our setup better to where everybody can see better. Ray, what do you think about painting on black canvas? I think it's great. So that would be that would have been really good for this exercise, especially. Um, there are some really nice black canvases out there, and uh, if you don't have one or you can't find one, you could always just paint it black first, with uh, you know maybe something a, a spray paint or something. And uh, but yeah, black canvases are really cool mm. because you can create a whole different look with those. All right, I'm going to bring Eric on. Eric, you ready? Let's unmute. Whoops. Wait a minute. What's up, Eric? You, I lost you. Hang on just a second. There we go. All right, now you're unmuted. Hi, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Hey, my little Dylan wanted to say hi to everyone, too. Hey, what's up, brother? Yeah. You doing, you painting a cool alien over there? Yeah, where's your alien go? Quick, look at it. Where'd you go? Did you put in the living room? And I got a little uh, little guy. I don't know if it's coming through all right, but I don't oh, know. Oh, that looks awesome. So we're going to have a little purple-blue alien going on some type of turtle alien thing. So, so he's like a driving a mechanical turtle? Kind of, yeah. Show it, show it, show it. Let's see it. Okay, that's cool. Talk. 
Uh, 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 Papa, you on the TV. Yeah, he's on the TV. Look, he's up here. Right here. What's up, brother? Right here. Yeah. Look, he's right here. I'm yeah. Your nose. Oh, he's painting on your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, show me that one. Let's see it. Oh, Whoa. Right on. All right. So, so where are you guys it. located? Uh, we're in Boynton in Florida, South Florida. Florida. Yeah. Everybody's up there. Sorry. Boy, That's all right. <laughs> Father and son getting ready to paint. That's awesome. No, thanks for sharing, guys. So this is, you know, what's really neat about this is like if you're sitting at home, especially now, um, you could do this. I used to do a fishbowl exercise, which was the same type of thing where I would draw like a fishbowl and I'd put my fish in it and make them really cool. And then I'd dress up as fishbowl. Um, this is that same idea where you can just really keep expanding. So you can see my alien. I drew his head and um, he's going to have, let's see, where's my, he's going to have like veins in his head, kind of like this guy. He's going to be kind of like this similar dude, but with like uh, surfing. But so my technique is the same for anybody who hasn't done the Pasqua classes. I use the dark color and I put the dark color on. And then I take the next lightest color, which in this case is going to be the light green, and I go half in and half out. And that's how I'm able to blend. And that's the real beauty of the Posca pen is it's a real intuitive, easy way to paint. And the pens are non-toxic. Uh, they don't have any smell. You guys are kind of figuring that out. But it's just a great way to get ideas out quick and um, just be able to have fun. You know, even as a, a professional illustrator, I, I really do have fun doing these types of exercises. There's less pressure than when I'm doing something, um, you know, for a client. I'm going to add a little, should I do this or do, I'm going to do blue. Blue or not, nah, you know what, I'm going to change that. I'm going to do red, like almost like he's got red veins in his head. Aliens probably have blue blood though. But you're just going to see how this, I'm going to try to go a little bit faster. I know all of our projects are going to look a little different. But just keep pushing the limit of, you know, having this crazy little creature and this little scene spill out onto your paper or your canvas. And start to see my eye, the eyes of my guy. I'm going to outline some places where he's light green. This is his whole face right here. Is he coming together? And you can see that, you know, for me, um, if I don't like something, I can kind of just fix it with the pens because this is just a map. You can see his eyes there. I'm going to make that a little dark green. So you don't have to be so rigid about getting it perfect. You kind of just keep playing with it. And the pens are very forgiving because then you can go over it again. And because um, the pens are so opaque. That little blue on it. I don't like the blue. There, that's better. Highlights. So now I'm adding white into this green. And the green's still a little bit wet and it's lightening that up a little bit. Ah, he's got a big head, doesn't he? Kind of funny looking. All right, I'm doing his fingers. There again, just dark and then light. Any other questions out there or thoughts? There's one thought and I gotta scroll back. This is kind of funny. Roberto said, damn Drew is reading my mind, taking my ideas. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> We're connected, man. <laughs> it's a connected universe. So it's like so cool. Like I wish that, you know, I could have been like in the film business and how fun would it be to come up with these types of characters all the time? and be able to draw them and 
anybody know what a character designer is? They get to, you know, really sit there and play with what the characters are going to look like in a movie and before they settle on the final design and how fun that could be. Um, we've all seen some crazy sci-fi movies and, and somebody had to think of all of those ideas. I don't know which alien I like the best. Um, the one to H.R. Geiger, uh, if any of you know his work, he has the, the, the movie called Alien. It was all based off of H.R. Geiger's artwork from Germany. Uh, and his art was just so crazy and it was so different than anything I'd ever seen before. And it just really shows you like when an artist's mind put to work and, and you know, is able to explore these things in depth, they really come up with some great, great work. And uh, the predator comes to mind. That's another great uh, alien depiction. And there again, just think of how fun that would be to create that. Um, nowadays, you know, with all the video games, I mean, all those characters have to be designed. And, you know, right here in San Clemente, the uh, Blizzard World of Warcraft was uh, created and all those characters for those um, video games. Now I think they're in Irvine, but, um, you know, artists did all those. So like when you think of a, a job for artists, all those things exist right now. There's people, that's all they do all day is design like funny things like this. How's my alien looking? You look like he's surfing. <laughs> Yeah, he's looking like it now. I'm gonna share my screen for a second and show one of H.R. Geiger's crazy alien drawings. Yeah. I just I just did a quick, I don't even know if this is a, from the movie or if it's, I just did a quick search, but you see yeah. that? Yeah, so that's H.R. Geiger's art and uh, he did the, the original alien movie and that alien is uh, really crazy. Um, I think the, uh, what was the movie, uh, was where the progenitor group was. Uh, all the aliens were just super neat. All right, so I got my, all my, oh, let's add his tail, hold on. First time I ever put a tail on an alien, but I kind of like it adds to the, the flow. All right, I'm going to get Gray out to do um, the surfboard and purple and gray. So I just try to use colors that um, will work with the project. And so this is the surfboard. I love the one guy's, he's got an alien on a, uh, on a turtle. So does anybody want to share their art? Either raise your hand or write it in the chat. I want to see what some of you are painting out there. <laughs> yeah, I want to see some imagination. If any oh, Jody, Jody wants to show her. So let's let me get to Jody. Hey Jody. Uh, oh. oh cool. So the my, little, my Mar huh? little Martian looking guys. Yeah, I am uh, a little, um, I'm a little uh, motivated by, uh, I, I love uh, uh, Muppets in Space. And so there's a scene where there's fish, uh, fish in, the, in the space, so. That sounds good. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it, if you think of it from a creative exercise, this is awesome because there's just so many like, if you think of the movie Mars Attacks, you know, and those crazy al Mars aliens, and if you, if you just think of all the sci-fi movies, um, it's just really fun stuff to, to work on. And the, the best part is there's no wrong. There's just, a, the, 
all the pictures that come out of this exercise are going to be really fun to look at. And I'm sure everybody's going to come up with something that we've never thought of before. Okay, Jack wants to share next. So let's go. I'm going to go to Jack. There you go. Hi. All right. Look at that dude. Perfect. Look at that. Are those asteroids? Some asteroids up there? And there's Mars. And there's Mars? I made up this planet right here. You got a name for it? Uh, you got you get to name it. Dad. Yeah. All right. So the the only rule is you got to get rid of all the white. So we got to keep coloring until all the white's gone. All right. Good going. All right. Thank you. Awesome. So as a kid, I was always enjoyed looking at the stars and I was lucky I lived in South Carolina and believe it or not, at, when the space shuttle would take off at night, you could go down and see the space shuttle taking off all the way down in Florida. And you'd have to look straight out over the ocean from where I lived and it looked, it would launch out and like shoot across the sky. And um, I just thought that was really neat that I could actually see that far, number one, but what was really cool is I knew those guys were going into space. And, you know, I was always fascinated with the moon and, uh, you know, it just really uh, excited me. And I think I would have been an astronaut if I was born in the, the 70s. Okay. Let's see. All right, we're going to go to Bennett next. Hey, Bennett, if you're What's up, guys? Here. Hi. Oh, you got one of the surfboards. Let's see it. Yeah, he just got it today. I ordered it for him the other day. Right on. That looks great, man. Thanks. I finally finished my son's set or whatever it was from the Whoa, other day. Oh, that looks great. Got a little trouble with the sun, but. No, nah, it looks good. It, it's, it's like it, it's totally different than mine, which is awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I, got, I finished mine. Mine's, mine's looks okay. Yeah, I liked it. It was awesome. It's kind of my, hard to paint small. Fast, and I didn't get the chance to put a uh, hut in there. <laughs> you can still add it. Yeah. I tried to add a little a pier, but it came out kind of bad, so I uh, skipped yeah, it. Yeah, piers are hard. If you get, it, Piers, you know, if, you, if they don't look right, they just look like a bunch of sticks sticking out of the water. So Yeah, the perspective is weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, good job, guys. My, this is my alien so far, if you can see it. Uh, let's see it. Okay, Maria, can you click on it? Oh. Oh yeah, cool. A little weird, but trying. I, I like the blending. Today. I'll send you a message of my bike I painted today. All right. Well, you guys are painting everything. That's awesome. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna get going on the planet because I want to get as much of this done as possible. I know this is kind of hard to do in this amount of time, so I'm gonna kind of speed it up. So this is gonna be like the moon below it. And I'm gonna add some craters. So craters can be just like little half moons like this. And then I'll put a hole in it like that. Let's see, I'll do another one here, here, here. Really all I'm trying to do is just fill up space. So at this point, you know, the object is to get rid of all the white. So I got my main character, my little alien guy in there. And then this is the foreground, which is the planet, the surface. Now you don't have to have a planet. You could have the whole sky just be black or what looks good other than black is just like maybe like a black and dark blue. So it's kind of a more of a navy feel. You see how that kind of looks like a hole right there, the way I did it. And I don't want the uh, this gray to blend in with my, my rocket surfboard, so I'm actually going to put a little yellow in it. So it sounds like a weird combination, yellow and gray. 
but it's going to end up being some kind of like nasty looking green color like the planet's made of sulfur or something and then we'll take some white where's all my whites so eric has a question sure how would drew suggest approaching the glass domes or glass helmets oh that's a good question so i've done those in the past and um you know, why not try to add something um, to demonstrate that? Because what you want to do is it needs to have a little bit of the same background of whatever so you can see through it. And then you'll add, let me see, if, how can I do this for them? Hmm. What do I have? Grab a little thing like this. Okay, I have a scratch piece. So let's say, I'm gonna draw an alien head, let's say, just like, let's just say this is the alien head. And he's sticking up in here and he, let's say he's got a glass helmet on. And let's just say that looks like it's like in blue. Now what's gonna happen is if there's black on the outside, Then there's going to be black on the inside as well, but maybe it's just a little bit um, not as black. So maybe we'll add like a little dark blue or something to it. Can you see my little glass thing here? But you you just want the halo of the glass around it. Now this is just a really quick job, right? So you can see, so you kind of have this little halo around it like this, but then you could take the white afterwards and accent it. And then you can add like a little, like light on it, kind of like that. I don't know if you can see that. And even like little highlights. Something like that, if you can see it. But um, it's mainly get, making sure you get that background in there. Maybe I should have put one on this alien's head. I'm trying to go too fast and it's not wet, so it needs to be wet before I can add that white to it. But hopefully you get this idea. It ends up having like this halo effect around it and it does look see-through. You can kind of see on this little guy, the little glass dome on there in the spaceships. Those are a little bit, I don't have as much seeing through, but you can see like it does look like you're, it's glass. And this is just a printout of a little painting I did a long time ago. A couple right, more things. Ashley wrote, the way the craters are done would work great for octopus suction cups. That's that's a good observation. That's kind of where I got them from, from painting so many octopuses. Um, you know, doing the suction cups on an octopus are uh, really time consuming. And so trying to have a, uh, a consistent way to do that, I, I came up with a really consistent way to do the octopus arms. Maybe we should do a whole class on the octopus arms because to make them twist and all that kind of stuff is really fun. All right, so this is coming together. Roberto has a question. Sure. Do you, does Drew have any tips on how to get better at drawing and getting the image in your head more proportionally on paper? Um, I think with drawing, so there's the people draw kind of two different ways. There's people that really try to get it perfect on the first line. So they're like drawing really perfectly. And really nobody draws that way without lots and lots and lots of practice. So in order to um, get that, get really good at it, you paint, you draw really loose and you kind of feel it around and you, and you find 
you've ever seen uh, doing sketches with like just little circles and feeling like mapping it out, like almost like a little, like a little bubble man. And then you start adding to, you get your proportions right or you exaggerate it. It's so like, so cartooning and stuff is all about exaggerating the arms and like hyper perspective and stuff. So I think the real, uh, thought is practice, but also um, practicing something real and then practicing, so, practicing something exaggerated. So um, in doing it loose, and then once you do the loose sketch, then you can come back and add like harder lines that you like, because you kind of have this little map, kind of like what I did here. I just had a little map that made it possible for me to get the hard lines after that. Um, there's all kind of, uh, you know, perspective techniques and things like, like that, that can really help you draw um, more accurately. Um, but uh, sometimes that becomes so rigid, it comes, so, becomes so much work that you're actually not having fun and you get frustrated. So my uh, comment would be is that have a sketchbook and have fun just creating ideas and scribbling and not being attached to it, like come up with a funny idea. And that's why we call them little thumbnails. Sometimes you draw this little funny thumbnail that grows into this bigger idea. So um, that would be my advice. Just um, have fun drawing. Don't be so worried about getting it perfect. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna stick with this green color and I'm gonna do all my stars in green. So what I'll do is I'll do a little circle like that. And then I'll take my white and do that. And then I'm just going to like kind of shoot it out both ways like that. And this is all my stars that I really want to stick out. Something like this and, and keep in mind, I'm going to be adding dark all around this. So the dark's going to be last. Something like this, do another one here. And guys, I didn't have this plan, just like yours maybe wasn't planned. I just kind of made it up on the fly because that's really what this exercise is. It's just coming up with some kind of funny idea and, um, and seeing if it works. And so far, this one's working for me. Um, I decided not to do my horn. So there was my sketch, if you can see right there, there's a little horn. Um, that's what's great about the little map. I felt like if that wasn't necessary, I thought that my little character was cool enough as it is. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start adding this background and it's really going to come together in this step because I've kind of filled everything else in except for his mouth and, and things. But um, I'm going to do it darker uh, down by the planet and it's going to go lighter um, as I go up and that what that's going to do is add um, some contrast but also I just don't want it all to be black like one big black thing so I'm gonna start doing the and this might be all black down in here and there again I don't have to be real precise like this can be loose I'm not doing the detail yet because I can add all the detail lines afterwards I got to make sure you guys can see. That was one of the complaints. If Ed Schlegel's out there, said he couldn't see what I was doing. Ed is out here. Hey, Ed. Hey, Ed. And <laughs> he's waiting. So there's the black. And so I'm going to take this. I probably need to take it up a little bit further. And how I'm going to do this so that it's not all black and all purple is I'm going to run some little spires like this up something like that. And then I'm going to take this purple and I'm going to do it all up and down because this is all running this way and we're running this all this way. And I just go right into that black. Don't worry about your tip getting messed up. It's going to be fine. And so I want to stay about a quarter of an inch away from that star. That's right here because I'm going to do something cool around it. I want to make sure I get around the, the alien. 
good. And this is really just about filling space without messing up the paint that you have on there. I'm going to get right up into his face right here. Something like that. You guys can probably see the, the sheen of the paint. It's still wet. And Christy wants to share hers. Let's see it, Christy. You ready? Okay, I'm gonna bring Christy on. Oh, cool. I gotta put him up like there. He's my little workout guy on the beach with the creepy octopus guy behind him. Oh, that is such a great idea. I like the little crest on his head, like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Right? Um, yeah. I also wanted to say that I'm an art teacher over at Brushton. Oh, great. And I think last summer I was able to talk to, I think it was Maria, and she said that my students would be able to send you like little video comments and stuff later on. Sure. And now that you're all in quarantine. <laughs> That is going to be a tricky thing, but I have asked the kids to join us next week um, during their spring break. Great. It's not spring break anymore. We have to teach through it, and I told them that this would be their lesson, so plan on seeing them on Tuesday. All right. Cool. Thanks. Well, that sounds great, and if you, you know, we don't have it planned what we're, what theme we're doing next week, so if you want to ask your students and then shoot me an email, Christy, uh, we could we could let your students choose. Oh, that's awesome. They'll yeah. really like it. We're working on trying to get the Zoom, I guess the school blocked Zoom so they couldn't even come in today. I thought that they were fine because if I could get in, I figured everyone could get in. Yeah. So I had to have tech guys fix it, so. Okay, great. All right, we'll just keep us posted. Yeah, no problem, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, can't wait to see that painted. Yeah, and so, this, you know, for everybody that's out there, you know, this is just something that we wanted to do uh, to keep everything moving. I know that uh, for us, our whole year, we were planning on going out into uh, on, on a tour with Posca and actually paint, doing this live at a bunch of different places. And since the quarantine happened, we decided to take it online and really all my mission is is just to get more people painting and more importantly having fun painting um not take it so seriously that they they're trying to create a masterpiece it's just about doing something creative uh that takes uh the pressure off a little bit and um you might discover you're pretty good at it and maybe you want to tackle a more uh difficult project afterwards uh, but the, the basic uh, intent of this is really to just get people being creative because, you know, if you can do this exercise where there's like really no rules, um, you can use that practice in so many different things and uh, freeing your mind just to come up with ideas and uh, maybe some of the ideas are totally ridiculous, but it's fun just to explore them. So Keone said, when this is all over, come to Argentina. All right. <laughs> Sounds good to me. And Sandy wants to share, so I'm going to unmute Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Hey, Sandy. Hi, you guys. How are you? Oh, three-eyed alien. I love it. <laughs> Four arms. Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you got to get rid of all that white, so you got a lot of space to fill in. I do. I am working on it right now. Thanks for everything. I appreciate it, y'all. All right. Thank you. There we go. See, just what a, a good freeing exercise. I wonder if my mom is out there. You see mom Brophy? I didn't see the, your mom on here. No. I don't, I don't, I, I don't think she likes aliens. She's scared of aliens. <laughs> yeah. I wonder who the first person to draw an alien was. All right, we are going to go to jail next. Uh, there we go. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, good. I'm just trying to work something out here. Uh, oh, yeah. 
yeah, Ooh. kind of like a comic style and yeah, just you know, messing around. <laughs> so it looks like um, mountains and all kinds of things. Where where are you? Yeah, um, right now well, I'm in London, but I'm from Spain, and um, yeah, just in in the lockdown, like everyone else, just trying to yeah. fill my time with something good to do. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, have, let your imagination loose on that paper, and just uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Mario wrote, the Aztecs were the first to draw aliens, LOL. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I've actually visited, you know, a lot of sites around the world where there's a lot of things that look something like aliens carved into stone and into clay. And um, it's just really interesting to see a lot of the petroglyphs in the Southwest. Um, some of it looks like it's uh, tied to things they saw in the sky. So who knows? It's a fun thing to think about. And um, there again, it makes great for sci-fi movies and it makes um, really good for artists because artists can then explore those, those ideas of what if. All right, this is looking cool. You can see how he's really popping off the canvas now that I'm getting this background on him. He's not as uh, flat looking. Kind of just messed up my moon there. And you can see how doing this uh, dark and, and mixed with purple uh, makes it a little bit better than just all black. So you don't want it all black. You want it kind of a mix. And then what I was going to show you here with the, the stars is I'm going to add a little bit of blue around it. So it creates like a little halo. So the, the stars are, are in there. My light blue is not doing so well. Use the big fat one. I love these seven M's because I can really add a lot of paint to the, the canvas. See, I'm blocking it, but you see, I'm adding this little halo around the purple. And so it makes it so it's not so uh, go from like really bright white to purple. It goes in a transition to light blue. Something like this. All right, are we ready for our buddy Sam? Ready for Sam. Okay. Uh-oh, the trash so, can's making a comeback. Yeah, I'm uh, this little guy. Oh, he's my favorite alien yet, man. So simple and perfect. Yeah, I still have to do more of a background. I'm gonna do a planet up top and um, probably do a little bit more on the planet. Yeah, man. Dude, he's killer. You can make a whole cartoon strip out of him. Yeah, he's super simple to draw. Yeah, good on you, Sam. Cool, thank you. Yeah. I love how creative Sam is by painting on his trash can. He had nothing to paint on, so he just grabbed his trash can and started going. Yeah, you can paint on anything. Yeah. Parker McBride, are we ready to move on to Parker? <laughs> hey, Parker, what's up? Hey, guys. Let, let's, oh, wow. That looks like a, a, <laughs> a bird alien. That's rad. Yeah, something a little different. Yeah. That reminds me of something we saw when we were in Egypt. Don't you, Drew, when we went to Egypt a couple years ago? It really reminds me of this. Yeah. The, yeah, you, cross between like your aliens and what we saw in Egypt. Yeah. It's, it's really great when you start to see some of the ancient uh, depictions, which is all art. And um, a lot of... Uh, uh, things that look like half animal, half uh, people, half alien looking things. But it just really shows you that, you know, ancient people were really doing some creative art that um, is hard for us to interpret today, but just the aspect of um, their ideas was amazing. And to see it in person, I was just like, wow, what were these people thinking? Maybe they were just doing this, they were just, you know, having fun and 
thinking outside the box. We only have a few minutes left. Does anybody else want to share? I, I don't think I see any hands raised. But if you want to share, you can either write it in the chat. Okay, Dan is ready to share. Dan, 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 here we go. What's up, Dan? Let's see it. I, I did a scary one, so if you're if you're young or sensitive to scary aliens, look away. All right. It's, it's not a cute alien, but um, you know, um, you guys that know me, I do these uh fish eye things. And then the other night I did a blowfish. Oh yeah. So I decided to do an alien eye today. Oh yeah. And uh, so it's coming along there. I got to work on it a little bit. That's um, awesome, Dan. I don't know if you can see that it in focus unbelievable. There. That is going to be crazy when you paint that. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. So, no, uh, that's cool. Um, I, don't, I don't know how you paint so small, but you're good at it. You know what? I always, my whole life, I, I do. I feel like the dexterity that I have with this is way better than the dexterity I have with this. Yeah. And I always have, I have a bunch of little tiny drawings when I was a kid drawn in the margins of my notebook. Going, wow, I feel like, like a master swordsman when I'm like this, like, you know, and I just like to zip around and, and I get into it. And then, um, plus I, you know, I know other artists and they have like paintings all over the house and it takes up a bunch of room and I could just, I could just put these in the closet and stack them up. Yeah, and, uh, smart kind of thinking. Keeps me a, a minimalist. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I can't wait to see your your guy painted. It looks great. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna move on to Jody. Jody, let's see what you got there. You oh, go. coming right along. Well, look at the that is cool. The fish. Thank you. Yeah, it's like it brings up a whole nother thought process of just like my other cool exercises with fish and. You know, I don't know about aliens, but like when you start seeing all the different jellyfish and angler fish and yeah, that's about as alien as you can get. I mean, those things are crazy looking. All right, now we're going to go to McKim J. McKim J. Hey. Hey. How y'all doing? Doing great. How are you doing? Oh, uh, look at this. Look, your guy's like cool looking. He's like happy. <laughs> And Thank then we got like a, a spider looking alien. <laughs> yeah, where are you folks uh, coming from? Oh, Philadelphia. Right on. Well, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us. I hope it's brightening your day. Thank you. Yeah. All right, now we are going to go to Emilio. Uh, let's see. Unmute. Hey, what's up? Hold on. He's gonna get you unmuted. It takes a while. Sometimes I press it and it doesn't take it. Okay, there we are. We should be able to hear you now. Oh, what's up? Hey, Emilio. Where are you come? Where are you from? I'm in Japan right now. A friend oh, who's wow. in invited me. Right on, man. So shout out to CJ. Yeah. <laughs> so what? What do you paint? Oh, I got is some highlighters and some sharpies. Well, but, that'll you know, work. It's you, got a one, you got a one-eyed alien with, a, with a, a Fu Manchu goatee? That's right. He's a pirate. <laughs> I love it. I love your spaceship. The spaceship looks amazing. Yeah, yeah I was surprised what the, the highlighters were doing. <laughs> yeah. If we get you some Posca pens, you'll be, you'll be like crushing it, man. Crushing it. Eventually, one day. Well, you said yeah. you're a Thanks right for now? Thanks for joining us from Japan. That's great. That's a oh, no great place to buy Poscas because uh, that's where they're made. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to Tracy Salgado. Tracy, you ready? Hi. Hey, Hi. Tracy. Let's see what you got. Oh, yeah. It's so freaking paint. That is so cool because it's like, even though she has sharp teeth, she, she's like happy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my at, brothers. Is this your brother? Oh man, that is so good. <laughs> man, that good looks job. Good. I like how you got him all bent, and he looks like he's like he's curling around on you like a like a crazy insect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks. 
Well, it's it. nice to see everybody having fun. I, you know, really try to get to this step where I am, where you're like getting rid of all the white because you can really see how it's, start, it's starting to pop off the page. And then from here, we'll add the detail. So there again, I wanna interject that, you know, this is an exercise in like creativity and just really letting go and having fun. And I'm gonna um, continue to work on this and I'll do like a time lapse of me doing the detail. And so you guys will see mine done in you know, I just urge you all to just sit and enjoy creating and um, and try to get all the white gone and then start adding the detail. And you'll find that time will just kind of go by. Your mind will be uh, kind of just focused, put some music on, and um, you're going to end up with something really cool. Okay, right. so we're, we're going to hit... Uh, let's hit up two more people. We'll Great. go to um, Coach C CJ, and then after that, we'll go to our good friend Gary Hedrick here in San Clemente. Oh. But we got Coach CJ. Um, there we go. Hey. Mine's digital. All right. Look at that. Um, <laughs> we're on lockdown here in Japan, so I have to be really selective about my art supplies right now. So I haven't done a an alien in a while, but I've joined in on a few of your parties. Um, it usually shows up. I surf like a girl, but I'm yeah, super cool. stoked that you're doing these. Oh, great. You're doing a great job. I, I, I love the, your, the <laughs> speed that you're getting out of painting on the iPad. Yeah, that thing's awesome. It yeah, almost looks like a wave, like he's riding a, like a space wave. Yeah, exactly. I do a lot of surf art, so um, it's kind of a fusion of uh, your ideas and my surf art stuff that I do as well. Oh, right on. Well, I'm glad that we could uh, hang out together. I, I really look forward, you know, this, this whole exercise of, you know, meeting on Zoom has been fabulous that, you know, we can all get together and, and hopefully that we get to see each other in person sometime and um, see each other's art. Uh, I was really looking forward to getting out on the road. You know, uh, we, we are supposed to go to Japan and actually do a whole tour in Japan. Um, that might be next year now, so that'll be interesting. It'd be fun to be, hopefully go surf in Shikoku in Japan, and and uh, I've been there quite a few times surfing, and um, all the different places, so I'd really like to, to get out there and meet with the people and really explore uh, not just the waves, but all the cool places and the food and everything. Okay, I'm gonna bring Gary on next. Gary, hey, Gary. you ready? Hey. There I'm you going. are. Hey, I'm sure Gary did something amazing. I ordered I ordered my uh, Posca paints, but I don't have them yet. So here's a little drawing, and uh, oh god, that looks that. amazing. There's a, I, he looks like a pizza alien. It's, Look at uh, all the faces. It's called the bug stops here. Yeah, he's like he's like the uh, the coronavirus alien. Exactly. I didn't have any colors for it, so I thought that would be uh, the the bug behind bars. I like that's what it. What we gotta do? Well, that's like a it, that's a whole nother spin on the whole alien thing. Like, what are viruses anyway? Where are they coming from? You yeah. just w wonder if they're like some type of seeds coming in on the solar wind or something. Gosh. Whatever they are, they're powerful, and they sure. put us in our place. They sure do. Well, at least we can all hang out together this way. All right, so it's almost five minutes after the hour. Um, Jerry's hard to say, let's just kind of wrap it up a little bit, and I'm going to come over and help you wrap it up. All right, I'm, I'm doing the eyes of my alien here. So I'm almost done with all the color, which I'm really stoked that I got this far while I'm talking and chatting with people so that you can see that to get it to this step, I'm putting like red eyes on my guy. And I'm gonna put a little purple and red inside his mouth. Like that, so you can look in. And then I'm gonna put teeth on him. I think I'm the only one that's gotten rid of all the white other than CJ, but she did hers on the computer. So she did, fa she went faster. 
Gary's was really cool. I can't wait to see Gary's finished. Hopefully, Gary, if you'll post that. And then I have a couple little planets here. Like this. And then, so when I get, when I finish mine, I'm going to add some more stars like this. And so I'm going to do that on the time lapse, which I'll post after this. And basically, once you have all this white or all the white painted and all the color on there, then you, that's when I go to the black and I like to turn on the music. The hard part's done. You just sit around and detail it. So I come and add all these fine lines with the black. And it's really the fun part. It's where the, the painting really starts to come to life. So hopefully all you enjoy um, making your painting come to life. And uh, thank you so much for being with us. Maria's coming back in to say goodbye. Yeah, thank you for being here. And I just want to let you all know that the replay of this and all of our Posca paint parties can be found on YouTube at Brophy Art Academy YouTube channel. And whoever the lucky winner is, which we will choose after we end this, we will track yeah. you down either by your email or post it on Instagram. And yeah. speaking of Instagram, if you are on Instagram and you post your photo of your work, make sure you tag Brophy Art Academy and um, Posca underscore USA. Yes. All right, everyone. Look Thank forward to you seeing you all so much. Look forward to seeing your finished art online and uh, we'll see you on Friday. Yeah.